finally, finally, the video you've you've all been waiting for. I, I've, I've read all the comments. I've listened to to the clamor for for this. Okay, for this moment right here. I couldn't think of a better word, so that's kind of what I'm leaving it at. This is the official, the final nail in the coffin, the, the last video really that I need to make, honestly. This is the penultimate video I can think of. Uh, I've, I've researched all topics, I've, I've scoured the globe for any sort of inspiration to continue on creating past this point, but I honestly have fallen short. I, I cannot come close to finding a reason to continue making videos after this. This is, of course, the walkthrough of the Practica MTL-5. I mean, they just don't make them like this anymore, am I right? <laughs> Thank God they don't. This thing is a piece of garbage. I know, I'm, I'm in the presence of greatness. I'm, I'm coughing at astonishment that me, a mere mortal, could possess such a such a treasure from the beautiful wilds of German Democratic Republic, aka Soviet Union. No better way to date your camera than to mark it as produced in a country that no longer exists. Am I right, boys and girls? Mostly boys that are watching. I see the analytics. Anyway, let's talk about this uh, masterpiece. Quite frankly. Um, yeah, it's Practica. What what more do you really want to know? Okay, I get it. let's just get into it. This is not necessarily similar to the like third-party cameras that were kind of like stealing designs from other cameras, like the Kiev 60, which pretty much is just a Pentacon 6, or the Kiev 88, which is pretty much just a Hasselblad, or you know, the Zorkies, which are basically just like us. Like, this is kind of its own deal, and you can tell based on just how awful the design is. This is a homemade project. So, let's talk about it real quick. First thing I want to point out is that this is not metal, okay? This is plastic. You may be able to tell by this huge dent that's taken in there. This looks very similar to a lot of A1 programs that people drop. They develop that same kind of chunk taken out of them. It is an M42 mount, which is one of the hugest saving graces to this camera, meaning that you can basically mount a super wide variety of lenses on, like really good lenses on this camera, which makes this camera valuable because it's basically just a Spotmatic that's cheaper and more poorly constructed. Uh, on the top here, you have your shutter speed dial uh, from 1000 all the way down to one second, and you also have bulb. You have your ASA dial underneath, and that is adjusted by lifting up and moving it around. You've seen this before, it's pretty much that. Here you have your advanced lever. It's at this kind of weird angle there, and it doesn't quite fold flat like you would want it to, but that's fine, I guess. Your frame counter sits behind the advanced lever, which is fine, I guess. I mean, okay. On the front here, you have just a clutter of, of things, okay? So let's go over it. You have your self-timer, you have your shutter release button, and you have your depth of field preview, and I believe this is also what engages the light metering system and or it's just always on. I don't really remember with these, but this is the depth of field preview switch. I guess semi-conveniently, the shutter button's right here, so you can kind of do one of these where you press in and push down, if that's kind of your speed. I'm not going to run the self-timer because it is the worst sound in the world, but you pull it this way and then you press in on that, and that engages the little gears and gets the deal to move. Cool beans. You have a uh, flash sync port right here. The flash sync speed on these is 1 30th of a second because I wish I had an answer for you. That's a horrible speed. 
This has a hot shoe on it as well, and you can tell that this is really securely um, fastened on there. Uh, I feel like I have nothing but confidence in this mount. Uh, over here, you have your yeah, your film release knob or your film rewind knob. Pull up on that, open up the back, and behold. Behold, I, I was going to say behold the glory, but I don't think that's quite fitting for what we're looking at here. So this is a horizontal traveling shutter, which is odd because again, typically you would install these so you could have a higher flash sync speed and also a higher limit to your shutter speeds, but it has a lower flash sync speed than like most other cameras of this ilk and also only a 1000 shutter speed. Not entirely sure why that is, but it exists. And then you also have just what appears to be the worst mechanism for advancing or for film loading ever. I would try my best to do this, but this camera was broken somehow. I took the bottom off to bend this back into place because before it was like sticking out and every time I touched this, I would stab myself. And I don't know what kind of diseases are in here. So I was trying to prevent myself from losing a hand due to some like primordial gangrene. So bent that back into place, put the bottom back on and then it broke. So, uh, but it appears as though this uh, advance, or the, the film take up spool does not work very well at all. I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing exactly how one would go about doing this. I would say that you put the film lead in here and then as you advance, this would cramp down on it. That was the, that was the desk, not me. But again, I, Kind of at a loss here. Moving on to the rest of the camera. If we look through the viewfinder, you can see that it's very dark, very dimly lit. It has this really weird plastic housing around it. Like it just sticks out. Look at how far that sticks out. Another camera that I really don't like, I just so happen to have nearby. Look at how far that sticks out compared to that. The viewfinder is fairly dim. On the right side of the viewfinder, there is a needle, and it appears as though the circle in the middle is for on exposure, and on the top I would say is overexposed. The minus on the bottom is underexposed, so you're just trying to line up the needle. And then on the bottom here, we have the tripod mount, which sits underneath the lens mount. There is a battery compartment, that it will not open, but I believe it takes the... <clears throat> it takes a battery of some variety. I will put the battery here, okay? And then here you have your film rewind button. So when you're done shooting, you press in on this, you lift this up and you reel it in. Again, can't show you because this thing is trying to die desperately. Despite my efforts to resuscitate it, it is just on its last legs. Um, yeah, I don't know. I got this camera in a lot of other cameras, and I was like, well, now I have one. <laughs> so, it's really, like, I don't know. I don't have, like, I'm not a goal setter kind of person. Like, I, that's just not how I operate. Like, I just kind of you know, do things one at a time. I have lists that I go through, but one of like my few life goals was I never really wanted to own a uh, Maxim 7000 because I just don't like these cameras at all. Some people really love them. I just can't stand them. I, and this one's not in great condition, but this one is mine. I own it. So great. That, that, that's gone. The other thing is I just really didn't want to have a Practica because 
Unlike what my coworkers used to say, there is not good money in the practicas. These are kind of garbage. <laughs> so, that being said though, if you do find yourself in possession of one of these, first of all, you can get one of these if, okay, <laughs> real talk. If you buy one of these for more than like $10, you've been had. Somebody saw you coming, okay? These, the, I would not spend more than $10 on a Practica. Like, the build quality, not great. The overall functionality is pretty good, but really these are just cheaper than dirt. And they should be expressed that way in their sales. So be mindful of that, be on the lookout. Now, if you're getting like a really good condition one with a nice lens and stuff like that, then maybe pay more. But if you're just getting body only and it's more than $10, get out of there. Get something better. Get a Spotmatic. Seriously. Spotmatic's infinitely better. Better shutter systems. And arguably, I, if you get a Spotmatic F, it has a way better light meter than this does. It's just overall, this makes me kind of sad like this is if somebody was just like we need camera and then here camera like that's that's what this feels like i need to take pictures they don't have to be good and i don't really need a i don't want to worry about what i'm taking the pictures with here you go this is it like this is something you could take like backpacking or something or like extreme sporting event I don't know and you can just have it thrown around and it will break because it's trying to break anyway that is its natural state is trying to break so you put in those conditions maybe take a couple pictures before it inevitably uh, destroys itself but you don't have to worry about it because it was only like five dollars so that that's my best guess with one of these the other like weird things is the shutter speed that you select is here as opposed to like here like it would be on every other camera so I'm not really sure how you're supposed to look at this because you need to look over here for the frame and you need to look here for what speed you're at so you kind of need to look at it like from this angle and then you're taking the photo from the front. So you, and you need to look through the viewfinder. So it's just kind of like a, I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Like it just doesn't seem very user friendly. And of course I'm being over dramatic. You can just do this. I don't know. I just, a really bizarre design choice. And I feel like if anything, they could have done what the, what was that camera that I was just working on relatively recently? Think, Alex, think. I want to say it was one of the um, Exactas. The Exacta has the um, shutter speed selector here. So you could, like, it would be set at 30 right here, and it would be oriented in a way that you could see it there. So I don't know why they positioned it here. That just seems like a weird design choice, but this thing is just kind of plumb full of weird design choices. Yeah, and also this leather is actually pretty nice. I will admit that. Like, this is kind of... I like this. It feels kind of cheap and plasticky, but I kind of enjoy that. I think this is probably my favorite part of the camera. Second would be just the little bit of flare on the lens mount. just think it makes it kind of look cool. And then the rest of this, it's like here and here. Everything else, not, not great. But anywho, that is it. That is the, uh, the, anyway, I can't even, I can't even joke anymore about this. This is the Practica MTL5, the video that you didn't even know you wanted. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel for more content. I have actual serious repair videos coming out soon, so stay tuned for that. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, comment down below. Shoot me an email. Would be happy to hear from you. All right. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.